Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we remember the life of a former educator, supporter of WIMT, and a lover of local sports. And researchers from the University of Kentucky meet with people battling with addiction to break barriers and bridge gaps in the world of medicine. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, y'all. It's 633. I'm Dakota Makris, and it's Tuesday. Let's take it over to Brandon for a look at our forecast this morning, and really there's nothing to talk about. Like Monday, nothing to talk about today, nothing to talk about, which that's good. I guess we'll take that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so later on this week, mm -hmm. we'll have a little bit to talk about. But overall, still a fairly calm week weather wise and very mild, mm -hmm. especially for this time of the year. Yeah. All right, let's talk about it. Let's get into the camera network this morning. We head over to UVA wise and you see I love that they've replaced this camera. It's a great view and it's a crisp view as long as it stays online. 41 over there this morning, campus of UVA wise. 27 in Jonesville, 28 Grundy, 27 Ashland, 29 Clintwood, and everybody else is in the 30s, 40s, and Irvin is at 51 this morning. You can tell Manchester kind of in the middle there of some warm response, 47 to the south and Harlan, 44 to the north there in Jackson, 36 to the west in London, and 34 there in Hazard. Now, Hazard has come up a couple degrees because of the southwest winds. It's already moving in through there this morning, so the biggest gusts are back out to our west, but you're still seeing our current winds, I guess, is the biggest numbers back out to the west, but you can see they're starting to filter into the east as well. Breakfast forecast, pour out your frosted weather wheats into your favorite bowl, and you'll see temperatures going up this morning. Having to split the difference because it's just one of those situations where you've got a 20 degree, 30 degree split. So let's call it upper 30s for high or temperatures this morning. They're not highs yet, but the highs today will be in the low to mid 60s. Dakota. All right, Brennan, thank you. A beloved former educator and supporter of WYMT and Mountain Sports has died. Virgil Osborne died on Sunday at Pikeville Medical Center. He was 88 years old. He was a charter member of the WYMT Mountain Classic Committee and active in local sports throughout his life. Our Keaton Hall has more on his legacy of empowering the students of the mountains. Sports in the mountains wouldn't be the same without Virgil Osborne. Virgil spent his entire life trying to help the students of Eastern Kentucky be successful. Um, I mean, he spent his career teaching, coaching. Osborne died on Sunday at the age of 88. Active in local sports throughout his life, Osborne was instrumental in the creation of the Pike County Bowl and the WYMT Mountain Classic. Virgil was one of the founding members of the Mountain Classic Committee, and he spent a year uh, just planning how the Mountain Classic would be run. So he spent the next 35 years trying to help it be successful. Osborne started his career as a teacher for Virgie and Jenkins, eventually joining the school board, coaching basketball, baseball, and football along the way. He played basketball for Virgie High School uh, back in the early 50s, and uh, I remember seeing him play. Gene Davis became friends with Osborne in 1965, spending years on the Mountain Classic Board together helping to dole out hundreds of thousands of dollars in scholarships. He's just the type of guy that he loved helping students, you know, get uh, scholarships for college, uh, especially those, you know, that need financial help. Both Everidge and Davis say they'll remember Osborne as a man who worked tirelessly for the students of the mountains, both on the court and off. Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. Osborne was also a former director of the East Kentucky Concentrated Employment Program, or EKSEP. Visitation will begin Wednesday at 6 p.m. at the Lucas and Son Funeral Home. Church services will be Wednesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. And the funeral will be Friday at 1 p.m. also at Lucas and Son Funeral Home. A hiker is recovering after a weekend rescue in the Red River Gorge. On Saturday afternoon, officials with the Wolf County Search and Rescue received a 911 call about a man who broke his leg on a trail near the Cliff View Resort. Once rescuers were able to get to him on Susanna's Arch Trail, they assessed the injury and applied a vacuum splint while waiting on additional crews to get there to help transport him to safety. The hiker was carried out in a Stokes basket and is expected to be okay. We want to pass along a traffic alert in southern Kentucky. The transportation cabinet says 
I-75 will be reduced to one lane at times today as work is done on the bridge at North Williamsburg exit. That's near the 15 mile marker. Crews will close one lane northbound between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. Then southbound 75 will be down to one lane between noon and 3 p.m. Well, February is American Heart Health Month. The CDC urges people to focus on their cardiovascular health. Dr. John Jones with the Primary Care Centers of Eastern Kentucky says heart problems are the number one cause of death in the United States. And with cardiovascular health, I would tell you definitely the things to look for and to mention to your doctor are things if you're feeling very fatigued, very short of breath with minimal activity, or any episodes of chest pain or twinges of chest pain. Those are things that would be good to bring up to your doctor on, on your visit. Doctors say if you are wanting to keep your heart healthier, aiming to walk 10,000 steps a day is always a good place to start. A once monthly meeting between UK researchers and those in active addiction is helping to break barriers and bridge gaps. Kelsey Soto takes a look at this program and its impact on the research community. This symbolizes the empty chairs that are across our nation for people that have passed away due to an overdose. A noticeable and painful absence that those in the addiction recovery community are trying to prevent. David Brummett is a program manager at Voices of Hope and says he wants to make sure those impacted have a seat at the table to be a part of discussions and future research now made possible through a community advisory board called Survivors Union of the Bluegrass. It's been our experience that members of the CAB have been very happy to, to share their experiences and are very excited in being able to help uh, inform research so that, um, so that we don't lose so many people to overdose death and really so that um, we can make progress. It's an ongoing epidemic that UK researchers are continuing to investigate, but they need the input of willing participants who currently use drugs or people who are in non-abstinent-based recovery to weigh in. Amanda Fallon Bennett is an associate professor at UK's College of Nursing and says often academics hear from those in long-term recovery but not active addiction. The group has already helped to contribute to meaningful conversations on barriers to medication, fentanyl test strips, and even reproductive health services. She says the interest has been outstanding. And I think it's because so many people in the recovery community and people who use drugs are really invested in wanting to be able to help end the, uh, the opioid overdose epidemic. For some, the journey to recovery isn't always a linear trek, which is why Brummett says they're committed to being there every step of the way, no matter how long or which path they take. And it may take time, but that one moment when the light bulb goes off and that person, you can see the hope kind of get reignited in their life. Um, that's tremendous. In Lexington, Kelsey Soto, WKYT. Kentucky has the second highest rate of overdose deaths in the country, not far, far behind neighboring West Virginia. Their advisory board meets virtually every month and participants are compensated for their time. Six forty here on this Tuesday morning, Monday 2.0, 20s to 50s out there. So a basically 30 degree swing this morning, or at least 20 degrees. Let's call it that from 27 to 51 across our area. Of course, Irvin is the warmest Somerset back up two degrees to 45, 30 in Manchester, 27 in Jonesville and in Ashland, 29 in Clintwood, 28 Grundy. Out the door forecast, we are going to see a little bit of sunshine at times today, but mostly cloudy skies. But the thing is the winds. We're going to see those pick up out of the southwest gusting at 25 miles per hour. So 63 is the official forecast. Wouldn't surprise me a bit to see 65 or 66 somewhere. Dakota. All right, Brennan, thank you so much. Still to come here on Mountain News this morning, the triple threat of flu, COVID-19, and RSV seems to be easing here in the U.S., but hospitals are still seeing crowds. We'll have more on that in just a few minutes.